好，大家好，呃，欢迎您参加此次的呃 CIA 网络研讨会。那么我们现在开始，嗯、呃，如果呃您在呃我们在演讲过程中呢，呃，请您将麦克风设为静音，呃，在呃演讲结束以后呢，您可以通过呃这个呃聊天的功能呢来提问。好的，那么我们现在就开始了。Next, please. 好，那么我们今天的题目呢是 CIA 四零二呃设备配置文件，那么就是这个呃 CIA 的这个运动和呃驱动控制的这个呃规范协议。Next, please. 那么今天的演讲呢，演讲者呢是这个奥斯呃奥斯卡卡普隆先生，那么他是 CIA 的这个工程师，呃，他将会介绍一下他自己。Okay, Mr. Kaplun, could you please introduce yourself? My name is Oscar Kaplun. Um, I'm electrical engineer working for Ken Automation. I'm technical secretary with many groups, including the group Mobile uh, Motion Control, which is actually this webinar is um, intended to the developers who are working and developing um, drives and motion control with an open interface. Beside that, I'm also testing engineered kernel automation, and uh, the devices such as uh, drive profiles are also uh, sent by many companies to verify their kernel open uh, compliance. So, as I said, my colleague probably already said that I will be holding the webinar itself. My colleague will be introducing uh, the part of uh, kernel automation itself. What it's all about, and if you have a questions, as you have already known, um, you can ask them in chat, or um, even in the meantime, you can ask this in Chinese language. Uh, my colleague will be so helpful to assist you. So, thank you. 好的，那么呢，呃，我会介绍，呃，我会讲解今天的第一部分，就是介绍一下，呃 ，CIA 协会。那么我也是，呃，在 CIA 任职这个，呃，技术小组的秘书呢，若干小组。OK， next。那么这个就是今天的一个主要内容的概要，会，呃，首先介绍一下 Can Open 的，呃，设备配置文件，然后呢，主要是 Can Open FD， 然后最后讲解一下应用。OK， next。那么，对于不了解我们的听众来讲呢，嗯，首先呢，呃 ，CIA 呢是开发和支持 Can Open 和其他基于 Can 的更高层协议的我们国际用户和制造商组织。那我们成立于1992年，呃，主要呢就是提供基于 Can 的这个技术、产品和市场的信息。OK， next。那么我们坐落在德国纽伦堡，呃，并且只有这一个总部。我们的实验室、测试实验室也在这边。OK， next。呃，这是一个基本的会员发展情况。那么呢，从去年和今年呢，我们都已经是超过了呃七百多家会员。那么也是一个增长的趋势。所以呢，用 Can Open 的呃设备还是越来越多的。Next， please。那么 ，CIA 的一个历史里程碑呢，比较重要的就是，嗯，在一九九九年，嗯，啊，在一九九四年的时候，我们首次发表了 CIA 三零幺 Can Open 的通讯协议，然后 Can O 呃 Can Open FD 呢是在二零一七年首次发表的，嗯，然后最新的一个项目呢，就是在二零一八年启动的这个 Can XL 这个第三代 Can 数据链路层的一个项目。OK， next please。那么，呃 ，CIA 的一个技术小组的分布呢，就如图所示啊。所有的这个呃、uh, ，interested groups， 然后呢是归属于这个技术委员会来管理的。那一共呢有这个如图所示的这若干个兴趣小组。兴趣小组下面呢有这个特殊兴趣小组，就是 special interest group， 还有 task forces。那么今天讲的 CI 四零二协议，主要就是在这个呃 p r o f i l e s IG profiles 下面的 drive and motion control， 呃，特殊技术小组里面呢，讨论和研发的。如果呢，您对我们感兴趣的话呢，欢迎您参加我们的技术小组。然后呢，如果说您对这个，比如说四零二协议里面有一些问题啊，或者是评论啊，或者是发现一些错误啊，可以随时联系我们，给我们发邮件，非常欢迎。
OK, next please. 那我们的市场小组呢，呃，就是类似于会提供一些呃展会联合展台啊，还有一些大会的演讲啊。然后呢，我们也有一些呃，在油管上头有视频，然后呢，在国内呢是这个哔哩哔哩的呃视频，呃，也欢迎您来访问我们。OK, next please. 那我们的主要提供的就是以这个 CIA 的呃文件规范为中心呢，我们会提供这个关于技术和市场的信息，然后呢，服务这个系统设计人员和设备生产商。OK， next please。呃，欢迎您订阅我们的邮件。呃，如果您是会员的话呢，会收到我们这个 member news， 呃，会收到这个关于会员的一些会员的呃内部的一些信息。然后，如果您就是一般的想了解一下呢，也可以订阅我们的 info mail。呃，然后每个月会提供最新的我们的一些动态。OK， next please。嗯、um, ，您还可以访问我们的网站，呃，包括我们的主要网站，还有我们的 product guides， 然后呢，都会有一些关于 CAN 的一些相关知识。它不光是我们的活动信息，还有一些关于 CAN 的基础知识都可以在上面找到。OK， please next。呃，想参加会员的话呢，您可以简单就联系我们。那现那您看到的主要就是一个会员的优势的介绍。啊、呃，对于 c a o p e n 或 c a o p e n FD 设备的研发商们来讲的话，您参加会员的话，不仅可以免费下载最新版的文件三零幺和四零二，呃，还有比如说这个免费获得 c a o p e n 厂商 ID， 也是这个开发 c a o p e n 和 FD 设备必须的。OK， next please。那么下面就开始我们第二部分的主要部分，就是由 Mr. Kaplan 来来给我们讲一下这个呃设备配置文件。OK. OK, thank you, Yao.、Um, hello, everyone who is joining us or watching this、uh, video from Kenya Automation、uh, in Chinese language, mixed、uh, also with English.、Uh, Uh, English language uh, introduction and uh, full of uh, <coughs> information on can open、uh, drives and motion control. So,、um, where we start? Actually,、um, the webinar is intended to those developers or device makers. Who already knows about CanOpen and would like to know what is about the CanOpen interface for drives and motion control? What, how do you handle this? Where you start with this, and so on. It assumes, of course, that you know a bit of CanOpen. So we start from this point of view. The first thing you actually get in hand、um, if you become a Can Automation member, or you see at least in the internet、um, for Can Open Drive profiles, there is CIA 402. What is 402? This is actually a specification number, especially for device profile drives and motion control. So this is a special numbering、uh, for. Uh, our specification. There are many of them for various device profiles, application profiles, and there are specifications also for CanOpen itself, for the protocol, for advanced protocols、um, of CanOpen. There, all information could be obtained from our Furba webinars, and can be found on our website and so on. Today we are talking about very specific,、uh, mostly used in the world,、um, from what I'm uh, I know. Uh, can open interface for drives. So, if you obtain the specification, or you first in the first place when you start developing device, you need some.、Um, Information about can open. You read it.、Uh, get some、uh, seminars, webinars, introduction. You can open. Read some books, and then you go to the、uh, seeing what when I need and do have a special project I'm working on, such as profiles,、uh, such as uh, drives uh, for various applications. Where do I start with this? 
So the first one is beside the reading would be the specification, which uh, provides the requirements that you have to implement in your device exactly as they are. And for that reason, the specification has even several parts to simplify you the understanding of how and where to find the information you need to implement such can open interface. Can open is standardized and even more than it, the 402, so say, can open device profile is also standardized. So there is a possibility, an opportunity for you to choose between using the specification and also the standard. But we'll talk about this a little bit later. For now on, uh, I'll describe how does it work. It can automation, as my colleague already described, already um, described this. Um, we have uh, several committees, several working groups, one which decides about how to spend money of our members to their needs and the activities they request on. Another one is a technical one, is um, actually <clears throat> coming together for um, which directions do we go, uh, which profiles, which um, device types do we want to um, provide specification. Ask our members or become probably a, even a request from many of our members. So we want to do a specific uh, device type standardize a can open interface for that. What does it actually mean? This one, what does it mean actually? The standardizes we'll find in the next slide, but I'm finished first with the specification itself. When you get the first impression, you need to know where to find information, what to implement. The specification contains several parts, several parts. And in first part, you have general definitions of in principle, how the uh, drive operates, what is this state machine and so on. The part two describes more or less parameters that you have to implement, physical values, process values, where they have to look, be located according to Kenopen um, concept, um, object dictionary, and also how to communicate the process value. This is the part three video communication, video mapping. Additional functionality, which is not included in the standard. This one is specification, but there is a standard as I mentioned. Uh, safety, can open safety integration and functionality description with parameters and protocols in there, how to use that and also specific PDO mapping, but this is a very specific one for the special kind of devices. Might not even know if you need it. Beside that, the specification it says doesn't uh, made itself, uh, but we have a working groups of working in a very specific directions and the working group drive and motion control is exactly the interest group, the working group at Kenya Automation, which specifically develops, started developed and maintain this specification with all these parts. What does it mean actually? The companies who work with this group, uh, with us together, they bring their requirements, what they would like to have in these drive profiles, so every devices would more or less support those functions. So making these functions actually standardized throughout all the kinds of drive profiles, drive uh, devices around the world. So as I said, uh, this is interesting point. What is a device profile? What is the difference actually? You can open, we have actually three uh, grade of specifications. The goal for that is for device designer and system designer to have less uh, time invested in configuration and uh, taking the, uh, the whole network operational. 
So in order to achieve this, there are different goals, different um, uh, reasons, different networks even exist. We start from the basic. We have basic protocol specification, generic profile, CR301. Uh, it just describes can open in very generic ways. So you can have um, a little of can open and many things of can open, but it's a very generic one. It's not specific. Uh, you can design your drive device also by this means using uh, 301, but this device profile will be uh, not standardized. It is from an open point of view, a standardized one, but from the device type as it is as a uh, drive, uh, it could be only one in a world, unless you talk with another manufacturer who does it too and says, hey, hear me out, do exactly as I am. But this is um, not always possible. The only reason for that will be if you have deeply embedded uh, drive in your networks. So you actually don't, don't need a very specific profile. You just need uh, a drive, which will not even be seen from outside. But it shall be operated only for your very specific set of parameters uh, and with very specific set of devices which do not need to have any compatibilities with um, can open drive profile, whatever. So another thing to make it more standardized and say the data for the drives. So the drive parameters, application pro and process data parameters, such as control board, such as set point, such as uh, interpolation, um, interpolation point storage, such as uh, modes of operation, um, such as position values, um, encoder position values, whatever it needs for the drive profiles, they are in this 402, they are standardized. So every device, 402 devices around the world have the very same set of mandatory parameters and may have the same uh, if supported optional parameters, but they have the very same uh, structure and content in there. So actually it's based on this way. So you could even exchange these uh, devices from different manufacturers integrated into your network. The only thing as you can see from this nice network, um, for this application you design from this device profile, you need to configure uh, process data yourself. So by default, there are already some settings for communication of process values around the network. So position and control information, status of the drive, uh, uh, target position, such things uh, actually have to be configured and transmitted over the network to the um, network component, network node, which takes this information or the kind of trajectory generator or motor, which set this everything in motion based on the data received from the bus. So this is device profile. Once you started to configure the device profile, make it application profile. There are three, there are, there are those three grades of standardization of can open we have at can automation. So today we are talking of device profile and the next slide describes you what is actually in there uh, basically for everybody. Uh, what is actually standardized, what means actually standardized can open data. So first of all, we say not a generic device, this is a specific device, this is specific um, can open drive device. We have several device types for that. You can um, see it in 402. The specification is however available only for our members but there are advantages that it is always maintained and uh, 
frequently maintained and uh, you have the very recent version of the specification if you become our members and start implementing uh, 402. So the first parameter you should know this mandatory can open parameter for any can open devices, but in 4402 is specific because it contains a very specific point 402. We talk about this in the next slides. Beside it, standardized is the arrow behavior in can open, and there are special errors, drive errors, not only can open or network errors, but the drive errors, for example, the the drive is stopped or drive is in, in error condition uh, because the uh, <clears throat> magnets are actually without current uh, and so on. These all errors can be transmitted network-wide and the object 1029 informs you in which behavior those, uh, <clears throat> which error behavior either the network should be completely go down uh, because of the error that is specified or standardized, but specifically for each device profile, especially for 402. The core element is video communication and mapping parameter because in this can open protocol, with this can open protocol, you transmit the process failure in or out of your drive over the CAN network. So can open general PDO uh, mapping uh, can contain whatever you need for 402. There are specific application parameters mapped by default in every device and every 402 device. And so you actually, any device you find on the market that support the default behavior, you will find exactly the same data inside. So, and the, another important part is that you have um, defining um, objects, defining uh, your specific um, data types, which you have some parameters, maybe 64 bit, maybe so on, and they have uh, maybe some strings, your manufacturer specific strings, you can define this as well. This is all the things you see here written optional. You do not need to do so, only if you need. Um, the mandatory is the standardized application parameter, for example. The Parameters are exactly for drive, can open interface for drive itself. It doesn't work for can open encoder. It doesn't work for can open, uh, can open IO module, whatever. It works specifically, it contains specific data set only for 402. And this is what makes this device profile standardized for all this kind of drives with can open interface, you know exactly what parameters inside once you read the specification. Besides of that, you could define, and there is also it is also defined a device uh, state machine, application state machine, and you can find this as well. So you know when the device starting uh, going to operational or going into the error condition where it is coming back and so on, such things. So now from this point of view, the key message. Um. So, uh, uh, Thank you. So we skipped the previous um, one, but that may be now interesting if you design your network with a uh, standardized interface. As you can see, there are plenty of devices, one of which the device B, as is left, uh, second from the left. This is a drive, but there could be 
uh, are the many drives or many various devices in the network controlled by PLC or CNC, whatever. Parties allow yourself to use their bigger interface there. And the device profile, as it said, as it says, a standardized application and PDO configuration simplifies your design. So, Yao, please, can you read the message? Uh, so, thank you. Then we go into details. We look into the object thousand, then we look into application parameters, and finally into PDO mapping and so on. Please bear in mind we're talking not on the uh, in the recent uh, set of a few slides, we were talking about can open version for 402. But we have new technology, can open it there. This is what we will talk in the next slides. So meanwhile, object 1000. This object allows either device designer or uh, system designer with only one STO access. To remind you, STO is service data object, uh, point to point, confirmed uh, communication used for configuration. You could Use, you use actually service data object to access object dictionary of every your devices. So by only one access of uh, using STO, you can read object 1000 and know exactly what type, what kind of 402 device beside beyond this is also supported. From the structure, you can see there are some um, flags uh, bit flags, bit fields defined, and there are flags inside which indicate uh, which mode to are uh, used in there, which kind of um, device is this by device type, and a mode in which kind of mode you can operate this device, uh, this type of device. So it's very important information. For the system designers or for a PLC, if it's supported SNC, this information gives uh, details on the device uh, you need to know uh, what it does it work, what does it do actually. Um, so, so Thank you. So before we go to the PDO, just take a look into um, what actually 402 offers in its uh, full width, full um, extension to any developers and even system designers. So you know from both sides, from different side, if you're a device manufacturer, you manufacture your device, but your end customers will be system designer who would like to integrate your device into their, uh, sys in their system. So this specification is a close cooperation between those two. So we designed the specification only from that point of view of system design, not from the device design, but from the system design. So there is then information for device design, how to implement it, to work it. On the other hand, there's information for system designer, how to apply it into his system. So in the first one, the uh, specification is not only specification 402, which you get access on the scan automation member. Otherwise, you cannot get it. Uh, another thing, if since it is standardized, already in a second version, there's two standards. Um, I see uh, 618100-7. It has two parts. 
beyond this, which includes application parameter. And the second one, 3021, uh, is the uh, this, uh, specifies a standardized PDO mapping. So acceptance of your devices grows if you purchase international standard and design it, your device according to it. The only thing you need to have is to get the vendor ID from us and you can purchase, uh, purchase the standard and design it. That's it. Advantage to being a um, member of Canada Automation and using this in there is that we have very recent um, version which will be adopted. And as a member, you could start your implementation of new functions, which only in a few years, maybe in five years, this is a turnaround of uh, standard IEC standards. It will be only in five years uh, integrated in a new version of the standard. Being the Kenya Automation member allows you to do it earlier, but it depends on your uh, actual goal. We go quickly about the other properties, key properties, which might be useful for you. And you can find um, um, easier to um, start with uh, 402 specification. The second one I've mentioned already, they're mostly implemented. The generic drive profiles uh, using 301 is almost unknown, or at least I have not much information about it. But 402 is a frequently implemented specification of it for drives with an open interface. It has three types uh, mainly, but it doesn't, it isn't limited to this. The server drives, uh, stepper motors, frequency inverters, and so on. The footprint, uh, the software footprint, um, the same implementation size of this could be very small and could be very big. Depends on you, on your uh, um, project. But the specification itself offers this opportunity. There are um, several manufacturers of the drives um, and several manufacturers of PLCs, which both support can open interface, which are together compatible. Since you have uh, to check this out with the corresponding PLC or CNC manufacturer with can open interface, either it supports the drives in a full extent, the interoperability testing makes uh, real sense. So. 好，那么呃，那么主要来讲呢，这个最重要的一点就是呃，CSVN2设备呢是呃被呃应用最多的这个呃，看 Uh, there is already device state machine defined, so it simplifies your uh, implementation since you have already your states. You can see the states and transitions and all from the specification, how they uh, bound together, what one state and transition cost to, what cost the transition from one state to another, and how, what is happening, it, uh, what shall happen in a certain transition of this um, drive state machine. That's very helpful information. You can find it uh, as well as in the standard as in specification itself. There are multiple application modes, uh, operation modes uh, in there. So you can synchronously have a drive uh, by a position to find a position. You can drive and control the um, current consumptions uh, with a code called uh, torque mode. You can have um, closed loop control. You can move um, 
in a very slow um, motion, um, having accelerated, um, accelerated uh, uh, until the maximum speed, and then decelerating at a very uh, slow uh, motion. Based on the other profile, there will be the velocity profile. Such things are actually an integral part of specification. It's very helpful. And you decide which modes you implement in your drive. Besides this, we have, of course, PDO, process data communications, process data protocol, allows you to transmit a messages like in CAN bus, like in CAN, uh, a completely message is complete with only process values itself. There are no configuration anymore. I just exchange the data, what is happening on the interface, exchanging uh, position values, target values, status position between various components in the networks. For that, PDO mapping is defined, PDO communication network parameter defined, and a very basic it allows you to transmit control and status vote accordingly. Uh, please bear in mind that video communication that we see in the next slides actually are uh, imaginary. The video is not imaginary. The video communication occurs on a bus, but you don't know where to uh, send or receive this device. So we have made it uh, comfortable for our designers. In the device, you can assign the PDO, either the device transmit it, uh, transmits it as transmit PDO, or the device receives this one, and it calls receive PDO. So just to know that Transmit and receive PDO are just configurations for your device. And in general, this PDO is transmitted over the bus. Okay, I was not finished, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, having PDO mapping uh, generic allows you, of course, um, to have either generic or type specific, like a stepper motor is already inside. The latest thing we have discussed already, we do look at uh, later on it, application parameters. This is a, a important part because they, simplifies your configuration and they are the same parameters for throughout all the drive devices with can open interface for zero to can open interface throughout the world however beside this one you have opportunity to implement your own parameters they're called manufacturer specific there is a special um, index range for that you are welcome to look into this at CR302. Well, since my colleague has already uh, said the message, then I assume I could go forward. So you've learned about the key features of uh, 402 specification, can open interface uh, for drives. Uh, then we go to the PDO and look into the very basic, what do we have? Um, in general in there, what, what is offering, why it is that standardized. Standardized is because we have those parameters starting with uh, 6,000, there are application parameters, and they are very same throughout all drive devices. So every device has at least, if they have support you on default video, may have only submitting in a transmit video, transmit the status of the device. On the other hand, the device which receives it has to be configured somewhere else. It is probably a C SNC or even motor, which has to uh, support this functionality 
or maybe even the drive device itself that receives this information from the SNC, which controls it. So it is, it is not simple to say, but a TPDO and RPDO actually defined in every single device you have. We don't define any PDOs uh, that are mirroring this information. So the PDO mapping for P PLC CNC for the TPDO1 from the device with node ID1 is not defined in a profile specification. It is manufacturer specifically defined as not a part of our specification. We do only one side, the device itself, what PDO mapping does it have? What does it sense as TPDO? What does it receive in as RPDO? So with RPDO, you transmit the control word. Uh, you receive the control word in your drive device, but this information, this control word may originate either from either from PLC, CNC, or another um, uh, element or node in the networks which gives the control or controls the drive itself. So. Okay. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I'm not finished yet. Uh, the second set of PDO is just second example where you have C uh, second standardized default value. You send not only status word in TPDO or control word in uh, receive PDO, but you have sent corresponding position value. In case of transmission of the data from the drive to the motor or whatever, it will be actual position value, which the motor has to drive to. Or in case of RPDO, this is a drive. It receives the target position. It has to give as actual value to the uh, motor, for example. So this is what is behind this uh, PDO configuration. So please, Yao, key message. 所以这个配置文件预定义的PDO呢,它的一个重要点就是它定义的是从这个驱动设备本身来讲,它只定义这个驱动设备本身,然后PLC什么的,和它是不定义它们的。所以呢,这个分为这个收发PDO和接收PD
So uh, another thing to learn about this, um, we talk about several devices, uh, shown about two or three devices in the network, but it's not all. There is a concept in Kinopen allowing you to have uh, up to eight independent software, even hardware entities in the one and the same physical device. So you drive A, for example, as you saw in a previous slide, drive A with node ID one, may have up to eight um, controlled entities from which one, the three of those could control axis X, Y, and Z. And the other logical device can control, independent from the others, can control other movement, whatever it might be. As you can see, they reside in a different indexes in can open object dictionary. The logical device one, index range, is always specified with parameters for every can open device and application profile. The same applies for 402. You will find your parameters in this very first range. Once you have to duplicate, to you have additional control of the very same entity, but you want to do this independent for the other axis, for example, for the axis, second axis, axis Y, then you have to duplicate the parameters, uh, not to duplicate, but assign uh, the parameters in the indexes uh, corresponding their placement in the index, in the very first index range, which means if the object 6001 exists, your object for the logical device two, which will be for the axis A, Y, will be 6801, just to know. So this concept allows you to integrate in one and the same physical device, multiple virtual instances of uh, the same device or controlling the independent entities uh, of um, your devices responsible for various control tasks, which are similar to what you doing in the device itself. So that is all about general concept, video mapping, application parameters, um, what is 402, what is the network, what is can open uh, interface for that. Finally, you would like to test your implementation. That is uh, where you um, either uh, get a conformance test tool or you send the device for testing to us. Uh, both are not mandatory. You can choose either, can open conformance, um, um, is allowing you to certify, to verify their device uh, for your customers um, with a third party in an unaffiliated um, can open test tool allows you to test the device um, by yourselves er even in the early stage of implementation. Please bear in mind that this information is only available for uh, our members so far. The can open test tool is available for the members. The testing of the device um, certification conformance um, uh, can open conformance is available uh, also for non members. For getting test tool as a non member, you have to um, order mandatory uh, order the can open conformance testing at Canon Automation. The, another thing, when you have your implementation, whatever you tested test at us or yourself using the test tool, you would like to know if it is, works with your PLC, if it works in a real network. We offer some uh, limited opportunity for this called interoperability test, but you may be also interested to have gotten into 
um, organized plug fest. We organized in the past a plug fest for um, 402. Sorry, here's a mistake. Uh, it's not 401, but 402. It's probably from the previous uh, uh, slide set. Uh, we have um, organized a plug fest. There are some other companies which even maintain your uh, maintain similar um, devices. And you could come to them and um, having connected your device and see how does it operates in under real conditions. So this is also possible. So from this point of view, I'm finished with an open introduction for drives. The next we will talk about can open FT drives. What is can open FT? This is new development, a relatively new um, 2017. We have released the specification for can open. And ever since we updating our can open for can FT based networks. NFT based networks was uh, initially designed by Bosch for uh, various purposes uh, to bridge the limitations of CAN networks onto higher speed, uh, higher payload, and higher speed. Uh, the content of the message is the same, the structure of the message is the same, comparing the classic CAN, as you can see from this slide. But NFT offers the enormous advantage, the high larger payload. I could submit up to 64 bytes against only eight bytes it can. Also for controlling of the number of bytes and uh, so on, I need to increase the values in control field but it's not actually increased. I'm reusing this information and having this data in there uh, using the earlier reserved in classic CAM format, reserved bits I'm using now for control field. Beside that, the uh, circular sum of the data over the data, a CRC is needed. And for such large uh, number of bytes, we need to have it bigger. So uh, in generally the structure remains the same, but the bits um, are a little bit different. So payload is important. The speed is variable. You can switch uh, beyond, beyond one megabit and there is a switching possible. You switch between the one megabit data maximum at arbitration phase. You can switch to transmit the pure data with much higher speed, up to 10 megabit, but for, for the moment, uh, reliable implementations up to four to five megabit. Uh, uh, that's it. So please give me a message.呃，那么CanFT呢，它和呃经典看来比较的话呢，它最显著的特点就是它的数据真的增强到了这个呃六十四字节。So uh, thank you. Well, um, CanOpenFT based on CanFT has certain advantages since we started. We did it already uh, the first version of CanOpenFT basic specification. CR1301. Uh, uh, we started with um, improving all the things that could be improved. One of those things was STO protocol. So we adopted, improved it, and changed completely and introduced some new functionality and call it now USTO protocol. It is completely different than the other one. So they are both not compatible. For communication between the CanOpenFT and CanOpen devices, you need a gateway. But the certain advantage of USTO is actually that you have uh, in the first place, 
you're having the um, various transfer to types, which is not possible, was not possible with uh, STO. With STO, you have confirmed point to point communication. You can read only eight data bytes, and the same data bytes, uh, the STO protocol was limited to eight bytes. Not only limited, but not reduced anyhow. Always eight bytes of data in STO protocol. The USTO one is variable and allows people the side of point to point, uh, which is called here unicast, also multicast that are transmitted data onto many others, transmit or receive the data from many others. Or I do send uh, request the data in broadcast, like in the radio, to every node in the network. It opens, of course, the new possibilities that you could configure, uh, update your firmware in all devices at once, or you could configure the very similar devices with only one uh, USTO transfer. Beyond this, we had in STO uh, specific kinds of um, transfer types, specific kinds of transfer, allows you to transmit smaller data and a bigger data, like a firm firmware or whatever. Uh, the expedite is mandatory one. The same applies for USTO in can open. It remains mandatory, so you always be on a good track, but in this case, the USTO is much bigger. It allows up to 64 bytes. Well, above the its uh, data we see in the next slide, what does it offer actually in this place? It um, allows up to 64 data bytes. So I can transmit plenty of information inside. Maybe not the full uh, firmware update because it requires uh, plenty of the bytes, which may be ex ex except um, uh, the limit <coughs> of the one single expedited user transfer. But for the reason of firmware update, segmented and bulk transfer were designed. How they handled, how to handle them, you can find in can open FT specification 1301. And there is some other key features of USTO that it is allowed a parallel access to very same device. So every device has USTO server as Istio server for, uh, in the can open devices. But USTO clients, there are several USTO clients. Uh, who may access at the same time the USTO server of one device, and the very same USTO client can request the several accesses to the very same USTO server as well. So there's multiple possibilities available. Besides that, I could even design a virtual networks within a can open network completely uh closed from the other part of network so you don't have an access to it there are special um, functionality to this there are also detailed abort codes but this information is beyond this one other key feature in there which we had not place uh probably is that all the data all the configuration for pgu usdo is actually put into the USTO frame itself. We see it in the next slide. In contrary to the can open STO, there are no need to design, uh, to put this in objects and to seek the node IDs, the, to seek the special CAN IDs for sending the message uh, in one direction and the other direction. The, as you see in this picture, the can ID of the client and the server is defined alone by its node ID. Uh, not alone by its node ID, but this is the basic um, value of the ID plus the node ID 
after device which sends its information. For the client, it will be the client's node ID, and for the server, it will be the client's uh, the server's node ID. That opens also additional possibilities across communication between devices. So, well, here you can see this structure, topical structure, simple uh, USDO message. Um, as I said, the configuration information is already in uh, several bytes inside of the message itself. Since we have 64 bytes of data, it's just plenty of the place even for application data in there. So we have a destination address. Destination address means actually that we know exactly what we're doing here, where to which node we address this. There is nothing else as the node ID of the device, of the device, of the client device. <coughs> Sorry, of the, of the device which actually uh, the request is going to, to the server in this case. So you see, with the client ID, the can ID of the message itself, it contains the node ID of the client, but there is no place where to, uh, where to send it, uh, the information where to send it. This information is located at the very first byte, so the node ID of the server is in there. So the server resolves this information and knows this message is meant for it. As you can see, there are certain values inside there and um, covering the network. There is no... Um, increasing of the number of nodes. There are still 127 nodes, maximum available in the network. There could be more, of course, but they are currently reserved for the very special purposes. So please, key message. Uh, so, thank you. I'll be a little bit quicker because we have still to say about a few things. On the other hand, um, USDO upload, uh, download, we mentioned before. This is for write access. The read access is different, it's uh, vice versa. But uh, there is some routing capabilities to allow me to design a network within a network, having the very exact location of my uh, data. Where should I look into there? And it's called uh, remote USTO. You can see this is a second message in there, and it is designed there to access network special information, which is not available and can open, is called destination, source and destination, network ID and node, node ID. So I'm exactly know where this information is located in there. So please, key message. 所以呢, 像传统卡奥本没有提供的这个功能，就是可以传输到其他的网络，呃的某一的指定节点。So, uh, why am I showing you can open NFT? Talking about can NFT, why is this of relevance? The relevance is this one. We have also currently designing four zero two with can open NFT interface. This means actually we have independently can open and can open FT interface for 402. 
Additionally, for this reason, additionally to the specifications, which are working for both cases, we have additional part which specifies PDO mapping. This means actually from Kenopen uh, FT point of view, that application parameters are the same. The only difference is in their PDO mapping. But it's only, it's not a difference whatsoever. It could be the very same. Meaning with Kenopen FT, you have relatively easier um, migration path if you have the same PDO mapping, same application parameters. There is only difference, however, in a protocol stack you have to design or purchase to, and in your application that you have USDO service. Kenopen doesn't have USDO services, only STO, and Kenopen FT doesn't have any STO, it has only USDO service. This is the only difference. However, there are some other key uh, features like the object thousand, which we look into um, maybe next slides, um, or maybe we skip it for the moment. Um, this means there's actually, if you design an open FT drive, uh, from the mapping PDO content, PDO uh, process data is the same. You have designing this one if you have design manufacturer specific. You may use the full extent of Kenopen FD. But this is actually uh, what we decide, decide in a working group. I've mentioned previously drives and motion control. The same working group works on this adoption of Kenopen FD to 402. As I said, the key uh, features of this one is the absolutely the same can open FT default can open um, default PDO mapping is identical between can open and can open FT implementations. So please key message. Um, so in the uh, Kenopen FD setting R C E, it actually, from the basic point of view, if it is only using this PDO, then it is actually completely the same. It is only adding a USDO service to it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, what is the difference uh, in this case, or what is the same? So as you can see, you see the same number of bytes in T video, in uh, receive video and transmit video as I shown previously in other example, they remain the very same. Although we have 64 bytes of data, why we do so? The reason is simple, simplify migration between the two implementations. So you can open FT device might not be um, communicating with Kinopen without gateway, but the process data content is still remains the same. However, we th think about the, um, adopting the advantages of 64 bytes data. And this where we look later on in this webinar into applications, how can we have get an advantage of it. So, please key message. Okay. 所以它從基本就上面上面也講的就是它的這個如果是預定義的話呢,那麼它完全是個可以應用的。它去使用它增加的這個64字節的內容呢,可以去實現它其他的應用功能,那麼後面會講到。Thank you. The same way as we had this for 402, we have also testing. And in the future, we'll have also interoperability test and do plug fest with can open FD 402 devices. For the moment for testing, we have a conformance test procedure, not the full blown tool. We're working on it. But for a moment, there is a procedure and testing of Kenopen FT devices is mandatory. Every Kenopen FT device 
shall be tested for conformance to FEMA FD. Okay, that was um, all about all about various um, network technologies can open and can open if they, as you see, uh, the both technologies work uh, in parallel, uh, will exist uh, for longer time yet. And now is the time to look into some applications. How does it look like if you design your device, where do you use it? Um, and how does it work actually? especially in regard of video mapping. A typical example, I couldn't put this uh, all example, I have plenty of application fields for drives, uh, as lift, uh, laboratory, uh, medical applications. Um, there are some uh, automation, deep embedded automated, automated systems whenever they have used in drives deeply embedded network, which even not seen from outside, it is can open inside. So they could be modular and so on. In this example, the usage of logical devices we talked about earlier is used. Uh, usage of is, is, uh, is shown. You see, this is easier to understand, to, to read, where do I have this data? And what do I do actually with this? As you see, the actual orthogonal positioning of the device in there, we have three axes where we're moving our drive. Maybe there are some other axes used as, as a help, helper to configure, they could also be logical devices and the parameters are actually shifted in a certain uh, way, shifted to the very specific index range. And then I have it controlling each single axis independently in there. How do I do this with video mapping? I having assuming we have node ID with number one and for controlling these three axes and another fourth which is moving in a uh, sequential could be a kind of stepper movement for the kind of medical injector or whatever it might be for that I need four PDOs four PDOs actually shown here there are transmit videos from those devices would transmit this information of the current uh, condition where my uh, element is actually positioned into according to the axis x y and z and where is my injector is located what is its current state and what is the, for example, uh, specific parameter I've wrote, wrote here, uh, distance to the injection point. So as you see, this is simple. We have already a profile for injectors, but video mapping looks slightly different than this one, but this specific application profile. What you see is an example how you could design your application in there and what PDOs, how would you configure in this case of multiple logical device usage and multiple access and so. So please, Yao, key message. 呃，所以这个示例呢，就是使用，例如说呢，在医疗环境中的一个注射器，呃，或者是其他的，呃，需要控制运动的一个呃设备。那么呢，你就可以看到，可以同时用这几个 T P D O 呢来控制它的三个轴，并且呢，这个设备本身的一个状态，就是可以呃，这个自己来设置的。Okay, thank you. 
Well, uh, that was just an example. If you use it, it can open. Uh, it has its own limitations. Um, this is just an example how we could use. Then if you have can open FT and you design your application by yourself, you have an advantage that you can design it up to your needs. And thus, using the enormous payload, you can merge all the data into only one single PDO message. For example, if you have several logical devices, typically they are logical instances, software instances in the very same physical devices. So it has one can open interface, can open FT interface, but it can send in this case information from all those instances up to eight, and it all fits into only one single video. This is just to understand you. Now, please, key message. So, in a shion jigger, you wouldn't shion cup my FD the Hana Haming and you could shion jigger Zenja the major and the jigger payload loses the year. Number so since you know, uh, found that eager TP the only man. Number jigger to just didn't shion eager cup my FD dear cup to Christ. So, to summarize, uh, today's um. The results of uh, what you've learned. Um, what is 402? Where do you start when you try design a drive? Uh, where should you look first in the first place? What is the specification or what is the standard you need for that? So this is listed currently in here. Important thing is this: this is um, standardized. So there's a slight mistake here. It's not ISO, but IEC standardized. It's another committee, uh, standardized body. And uh, you can purchase 402 as a standard from there. And acceptance of your device will increase um, alone because the standardized uh, devices, standardized devices have certain advantages against simple specification. The second one is that you have can open uh, already very far uh, developed interface for drives as 402 profile, already in a version four, uh, which was standardized, and then in a version uh, for whatever, maybe even 5.0. Beyond that, we have additionally also can open FT version of it, at least uh, PDO mapping, and it is backwards compatible to the can open one. So allowing to use devices uh, in the same network, however, you still require uh, com to communicate between can open and can open FD, you would require a gateway. So, can open will not be uh, removed. Um, can open and can open FD implementations will work in parallel, will exist in parallel for a certain uh, amount of time. Can open if they had certain advantages, but it moves a little bit slow. However, if you have some requests and interest in your payload for your very specific application, then I might consider it whatsoever. Using um, can open if they, you will reduce uh, your PDO numbers um, amazingly. Using the existing can open implementation, it can open uh, PDO mapping. You have a choice between a very little information, PDO information, and uh, sufficient information for every drive. So uh, you need maybe only one PDO. If you need some additional information, 
that you need a real uh, target generator. You have to transmit the data, exchange the data in a real. Then you could uh, access uh, and map for the default mapping. And you should be uh, considering there are various for various device type like stepper motor, generic motor, a uh, generic drive um, inverter, or uh, other devices. There are different video, slightly different video mapping sets defined, but the base in their core they are the same. All of those provide the status word, control word, and actual and target position. So this means your devices will be actually very much uh, compatible uh, between each other. So that is almost everything. Um, maybe a few slides um, for general information on our FURVA webinars, our exhibitions where we participating, you can meet us in person. Um, I do not know though uh, if this year's exhibition will be hold in its full extent and how it will be hold, but we hope that we could uh, see you in next time on our booth in, uh, <coughs> in uh, the next time. If you're interested in full webinars, uh, we have um, more uh, specific uh, information on can open FT, can FT, can Excel, uh, new development, a very new development. And there are also uh, some specific uh, details on um, can open interfaces, device profiles. You can also ask us, what would you like to have as your webinar? We may consider this uh, opportunity to present uh, the information you will seek. So this is our address where you could contact us. You are very welcome to do so in the meantime. Thank you very much and have a nice time. Bye-bye.